Today on the show, we're going to be looking at a couple of very controversial old-fashioned builds. Along with being one of the most iconic cocktails and arguably the oldest, the old-fashioned inspires a lot of passionate opinions. For professional bartenders and home bartenders alike, this drink is the one that almost everybody first learns. And if you're really into cocktails, it's a safe assumption that you have your way of doing it and that that is the only way that it should be done. But as I have said on this show many, 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 many times before, there's more than one way to skin a cat and there is no one way to make a drink. Most everybody learns a proper drink and then adopts an arrogant attitude about cocktails. And the funny thing is, the more you learn about drinks, the more open and less absolute your attitude becomes. So today, let's dive into these old fashioned builds that everyone thinks are trash and assess them purely on their merits. Preconceived notions stripped away. Today's episode is sponsored by Established Titles. Have you ever wondered how you could, in a very novel way, help global reforestation by preserving the natural woodlands of Scotland? The project is based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to lairds or lords and ladies in English. Established Titles will set you up with your own plot of land and unique plot number. For every order, they plant a tree and work with global charities, One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, to help global reforestation efforts. And Marius and I were thinking, we don't know how many of you guys will want to become a lord or a lady, but for the first 200 orders, those people will get plots of land right next to ours, and we thought that we could make a whole barfly kingdom. And for those of you asking yourselves if you can really become a lord, Yes, if you own land in Scotland, you can become a lord. You can even change your name on airline tickets, credit cards, memberships, anywhere you can add a prefix. Lord Leandro of Barfly Kung. I, I quite like the ring of that. And I love it if 200 of you guys would join me in my own kingdom. Right now they're having a massive Black Friday sale of 10% off with our discount code BARFLY at checkout. Join me, let's be lords and ladies together. Be my loyal subjects in my Barfly kingdom. I don't know if they would be my subjects no, though, would they? They would just be equal lords. Join me, lords and ladies of the Barfly Kingdom. Become a lord, become a lady today. Put in the discount code, get 10% off, and we can rule the world together. Or at least 200 feet of Scotland. The first old fashioned we're gonna be looking at today is the mid-century old fashioned. You know the one, the one with all the muddled fruit in the glass? This drink is actually trending on TikTok because yet another generation of cocktail making bartenders have discovered the footage of Janine Nyberg making a crazy 20 ounce old fashioned in a British pint glass. And just as a little aside before we get into making the cocktail, the website Punch did an article on Janine and her making of the old fashioned and the video that unfortunately went viral a decade after it was posted by Mahalo.com and became an example of how not to make an old fashioned. The story behind it is quite surprising and worth a read, so check a link below. And let's get into making the cocktail. Because we're going to be making these old fashions the way they would normally be made in a bar, we are going to be using the regular maraschino cherries and we're not going to be upgrading those cherries to Luxardo. Although the drink that we're making today is being done with the specs of Dale DeGroff. And according to Dale DeGroff in his redo of the craft of the cocktail, like the new version of that book, this is his preferred version of the old fashioned. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a couple of orange wheels. We're gonna take the thicker end of this here and we're gonna drop it into the bottom of our glass. We're gonna add one sugar cube. We're also gonna be using two of these cherries, but for now, we're just going to get one of them out. Extract the stem, put it in there as well. We're gonna do our regular dashes of Angostura bitters. And as I've been known to do, a little dash of soda water. And we're gonna give this a good muddle. Now what we're gonna try and do is muddle the flesh of the orange without extracting too much from the pith around the peel. So you don't wanna extract any bitterness into this drink. And we're gonna mash up that cherry. We're going to add two ounces of Wild Turkey 101. Okay, now we've magically gotten our ice, put some in our glass here as much as we can, given what we've got on hand. Okay, I'm not using hotel pan ice. This is obviously really, really nicely frozen clear ice, but that's all I've got on hand. And so we're just gonna have to make do with what we've got. That said, we are using cubes. And then to finish this off, we're just going to take a cherry and then pick it to an orange, stick it in there. And there you got your old fashioned. This is the mid-century old fashioned. All right, let's give it a sip. I think the one element that makes this kind of trash is the cherry. 
The cherry's not very good and it doesn't like lend a very nice flavor to it, but if you upgraded this drink to Lux a Luxardo cherry, it would be 100% fine. I mean, it'd be totally fine. Okay, obviously your choice of bourbon is gonna play a lot into this and using 100 proof really kind of gave it a nice body and a little spiciness to it. And it's also gonna balance out the sugar a little, but it's, it's not terrible. I wouldn't call it trash. I just think that it needs better cherries. And then I've, the other argument against this drink that I've heard is like, oh, fruit doesn't belong in an old fashioned because the citric acid destroys the bourbon. But you know, honestly, if you drink whiskey sours, then that point is completely moot. I think this is a pretty good drink. Upgrade your cherries. There it is, guys, the mid-century old-fashioned. All right, the next drink we're doing is called a Wisconsin Old Fashioned, and we have done various versions of this drink over the years. I always try to elevate it in some way, and then inevitably, every Wisconsinite on the planet tells me how wrong I did it. So today, we're gonna try and make an original version of this drink with the proper brandy. So just to make sure I'm not gonna gussy it up in any way, I got a good short tutorial from my friend Dave Schlachtenhofen who lived in Wisconsin for a, a long while so that I can be sure that I'm doing this right. I also wanna share with you his thoughts on the drink. He gave me a little text and I think it's worth reading the text. Dave said, I'd be happy to share my thoughts with you again, but I'm not sure why people are so interested in the Wisconsin Old Fashioned. It's essentially a repeated bastardization of the Old Fashioned to the point where it's really more of a highball with fruit muddled in. I guess it's actually kind of interesting be just because there are so many different elements. It's such an inelegant hodgepodge of different styles of drinks. But really it just sprouted from laziness and bad info and people trying to make a stiff drink more approachable. Any attempt to dress it up or make it more elegant is to miss the point. It should be made with cheap ingredients and bad ice because that's the way it was born. I love it and hate it. And everyone who cares about cocktails should both love it and hate it too. All right. With that said, I think we can make the cocktail. And then of course, I don't have that bad hotel pan ice, so we're not gonna be doing it with that. The ice is going to be a tiny bit elevated, but the drink itself is not. We did get the proper brandy for this drink, which is Corbell. An interesting fact about Corbell is that the Wisconsin Old Fashioned is so popular in Wisconsin that it accounts for 50% of Corbell brandy sales in the United States, and Corbell is the best-selling brandy in the United States as well. So if you're doing this the proper way, you're gonna need these guys. All right, so in a glass, we're gonna, again, cut an orange slice. I'm gonna put this orange slice in here, along with one cube of sugar, Vangastura bitters, and then two cherries, the cheap red ones. There you go, boom. And then with a little dash of soda as well. And then we're just gonna give this the old muddle. Again, we'll try to be careful not to uh, hit that peel too much. So you don't want to get the bitterness, just like last time. This is gonna be crazy sweet with soda in it as well, man. Two ounces of Corbell brandy. Gonna be using cube dice. And if you guys really wanna do it the, the right way, then you're gonna have to use that cheap hotel pan ice. Now we don't wanna fill this volume up too much. Give it a nice stir, stir it down. Okay, so, now that we stirred it. In Wisconsin, they will ask you if you want this sweet or sour. If you want it sweet, you get it with Sprite. If you want it sour, you get it with Squirt. I mean, there is actually an option, according to Dave, there's an actually an option where you can make it not sweet and sour, and then you just fill the rest with soda water. I put a little dash of soda in here for the sugar though, so I think I'm gonna go with this. And then we're just gonna top this up with three ounces of Squirt. All right, bottoms up. Like, this would be great, but why do we have to put squirt on it? All right, I'm gonna garnish it. It's a orange flag garnish. And so what that is is actually, cannot cut in a straight line, I just can't. An orange flag looks like this. You take your cherry, you take an entire wheel here. So what we do is we take the pick, we run it through one side of the orange, then you put your cherry on, then you run it through the other side of the orange, like that. That is called your flag, and then you just stick the flag in, like so. And there you have your garnish. So that's the Wisconsin Old Fashioned. I mean, it's just like, oh. here's the deal. It's, it's actually not like unpalatable. It's not like I'm like, oh, that's gross. I can't drink it. It's just a weird amalgamation of flavors, right? So you got your sugar and you got your brandy and you taste those, but then you have this, you know, kind of bitter sweet soda in it. And it's just strange. I think this would be a disaster with Sprite as well. Actually, I think Sprite might make it taste even more watered down just because Sprite 
doesn't have such a strong flavor as squirt does. And I don't know if it would be super sweet. All of it is really sweet anyway. It's very unbalanced. I can understand why he hates it. I could see why you love it if it's something that's like really traditional to a certain place and it's kind of, I don't know, I'm a pretty sentimental guy. So I can see if you had some sentiment towards it, then you would really like it for that reason. But it's not a good drink, like by any standards of like what a good drink is. So there it is, the Wisconsin Old Fashioned. All right, guys, that wraps up our video on the old fashions that you love to hate and hate to love. Hope you guys got something out of it and it was illuminating in some way. And I will see you guys on another time.